Bolting versus welding. You may think it's an easy debate, as there's definitely places where welding would be preferred or a bolt connection is more preferable. However, they do behave fundamentally different, but they're also the same in different situations. So let's bring these two types of connections head to head and find out where and why you should use each of them. My name's Brendan, your structural engineer. Now let's get into it. When looking at these two types of connections, we need to look at strength, ease of construction, cost, adaptability, long-term performance. Where is one connection preferred over the other? As it's not always the most efficient connection to have a fully moment connection, where potentially a pin connection will do, which is more predictable and allows for better transfer of forces. So we need to break down both a moment connection, fixed connections and pin connections in this consideration. Let's just start with the basics. So how do we design either a bolted or welded connection? So a bolted connection, I think it's quite easy. You just put a bolt through and you design that bolt in shear to make sure it can resist those forces. So we're looking at the different types of bolts. We have snug type bolts, friction type bolts, and bearing type bolts. It's all to do with on how tight you do the bolt up. And typically you want to stay with your snug type bolt as that's the most predictable and give you the highest capacities. But if slip or movement is really critical, that's when you probably need to look at either your friction type or bearing type bolts. You do need to be careful here. Even with a friction type bolt, we've repaired the surface and bolted the two plates together. There will be slip in the ultimate condition. So if you do want to prevent slip, maybe you need to look at a different type of connection and move away from your bolted joints. When we look at the different types of connections as well, we just don't want to stick with a moment frame necessarily. Yes, a moment frame is great. It provides a lot of stiffness, but it will provide secondary actions into your column. Try and push it over. You can see it creates a force that pushes stuff along. Where if we take away that moment connection, it's more freely and readily to move. And you can see how the column bends as opposed to the secondary actions of where it's doing two-way bending. When we try and push it over, you can see this double action is forcing a moment into the column. However, if you just need to pick up vertical forces because your bracing actions are occurring elsewhere in your structure, you can remove that moment fixed connection, use it with a snug tight fin plate, have a lot more capacity on your columns because there is no moment transfer, and still have a structure that is stable and more beneficial. It's also easy to install as there's more freedom in how you connect those parts together. While with welds, they're a little bit more simple. You can still have those pin connections and those moment connections depending on where you're welding. So if you weld onto the fin plate, it means the moment can't be effectively transferred. But a weld is just really done in shear or tension. So you weld along the edge of the weld and that sort of melds the joints together more like a glue. So the longer that weld is, the higher the capacity that it has. Typically when you're looking at say a six fillet weld, it's typically about one kilonewton per millimeter. So you can easily back calculate how much millimeters you need in welding to get you up to the full capacity. They're also great because you are melding together. Those slip connections that we talked about earlier, if you do have a joint that is really critical in slip and it can't really move, that's where you want to move to more of a welded joint as it won't slip. It's welded together, it effectively transfers the load as opposed to having the plates there and needing a friction tight connection to allow it to slip. Because a bolted connection, can't have zero tolerance as you will never get it together. There will be some slip in the joint before it effectively takes a lot of load. So you can see through this quick equation that there is a couple of other things that you need to consider when doing a bolted connection. So while we're just welding the plates together and just doing a pure shear transfer, with the bolted connection, you'll have the bolt hole, you'll have bearing on the bolt, you'll have shearing on the bolt, you'll also have tearing in the plate. So there's a number of other things that you need to consider in the strength of that connection. It's not just the bolt. Where a welded connection is more around the plates and sizes. So if it can transfer the tension force through it, it's typically okay. One thing you do need to note though, when looking at a bolted connection is looking at how the shear transfers through the structure. If you connect it with a fin plate, it won't transfer any moment as it allows for a little bit of rotation. Where if you want to transfer the moment, you either need to do that with an end plate or with flanges in the top and bottom to get the forces that are transferring from the moment where it's mostly resisted. So it's careful detailing around your welded connections, especially when tension, to make sure they're more in a planar direction than parallel to the direction of force. How about fabrication and installation? This is really where the debate comes down, as it really depends on where your connection is. There's definitely connections in your structure that are better to be welded. So anything that can be prefabricated on site and brought to the site pre-assembled, that's where a welded connection most of the time will start to win out. But if you do need to connect your structure up, for example, you can't ship a whole frame. 
So it needs to come in different parts. You need to get the columns, which you then place on site. Key tip when you do place those columns down, quite often we're trying to reduce the number of bolts in the base of a column. But what you want to do is have four bolts typically in the base of your column. So why is that? As it means that you can place that column down and bolt it down and it can be stable in the temporary condition as it can stand up by those four bolts. Where if you have two bolts, you do need to provide additional propping. So despite there's a little bit more work and a little bit more base material, it's typically a lot quicker and a lot faster to have a four bolted connection as opposed to a two bolted connection. So after the columns are in place, you can then come and get your beam and install it on site just by bolting those connections in. It means you can drop it down and the time and labor required is a lot less skilled. That you can easily break down your structures into smaller parts, have them shippable and placed together on site. Doesn't matter what the weather is, whether it's cold, dry, wet. Whereas a welded connection is really based on the skill of the welder. So where you can have a little bit more time in the factory, you can make sure that those welds are good. But on site, typically in hard areas, especially doing overhead welding, up in other conditions, it can be harder to get those good welds. It also means that you have need to have more skilled labor on site to put it together. As those welders is based on the quality of them. So they need to be well trained. Why we talked about some of the cons of a welder connection, you know, the high cost of labor, more conditions on site. And typically with those welds as well, you typically have a lower capacity weld if done on site than done in a factory due to the control conditions. That's where we have a special weld, so just special purpose and general purpose, and typically it has a higher factor of safety associated with them. So those welds will need to be bigger. Some of the cons with a bolted connection typically needs a little bit more design and look towards it. It's typically bigger and bulkier, and typically you see those bolts. So if they're hidden behind some architecture or framing, it's normally not too bad. But if it's exposed, those bolted connections are typically a little bit less unsightly in an architectural sense. So sometimes you may make the decision to have a more expensive connection due to the look and feel that you're trying to achieve. How about maintenance and long-term performance? This is where it gets a little bit hazy. A bolted connection, while typically done up correctly, won't loosen, but there is potential times over the decades that it may loosen over time, especially if it's a slip resistant connection. Those bolts may need to be done up and tuned to see how it's performing. Where welds won't typically move or deform over time, they can be potentially susceptible to fatigue-based loading. If you're going backwards and forwards over time, there could be cracking and distortion because of the heat and the effect of that weld. If you haven't designed it correctly, maybe those welds need to be slightly bigger to give you a little bit more strength if under cyclic loading. Corrosion, now here's the big one. This is typically where bolts will win out as the building can be treated before it comes to site. So you can treat the bolts and have them specifically designed to have long-term durability. You can treat the steel because you don't affect it, it's just coming to place and you're bolting it together. So you can have an unprotected finish, especially for all those on-site welding conditions. Where welding will typically be perform a lot worse. As you're welding, you're damaging any of the protection that you have on site. Potentially you have to have that protection stripped so you can get an effective weld on the area that you're trying to weld to. It may need to be post repaired after the welding has been done, but needing to look into future development as only that post fixing is nowhere as good as doing it inside a factory. So maybe you need some ongoing maintenance that either needs painting or repairing that durability protection that you have on the structure. And another major point that's really beneficial for more of your bolted connections than your welded connections, they're more easily visually inspected. You can visually inspect how the bolts are behaving. You can visually see any deformation or behavior in the structure. So you can get an inspector out there to more easily see the impact and how the building's performing. Where something like a weld typically need a non-destructive test. So whether that be ultrasonics or something similar, you need to inspect that weld because it's really ingrained into the body of the system. So you're looking into the base material how it's actually performing and if there's any cracks or damage occurring over time. So the inspection of welding requires a lot higher standard than a bolted connection, whether you're doing that in a factory, on site or ongoing maintenance. But as a general guide, typically most of the time you want to use a bolted connection due to the ease on site, easy to inspect, the higher capacities that you can potentially achieve, especially if it's hidden behind structure, it just makes it a lot easier. And if something gets damaged, it's a lot easier to replace as well. You can just unbolt that connection and replace it or even dismantle the building. As we're looking for a circular economy, having to dismantle your structure and reuse it in other places is an extreme advantage. Whereas a welded connection 
is places where potentially you can do a lot of work in the factory before it comes to site, such as in modular construction, or even just the column base plates that you connect in. Or if you've got a more complex structure that you don't really want to make sure where the forces are transferred to make sure you get more effective loads or slip to resistant connection. Another thing that you might want to consider is also if it's a visually appearance. So sometimes when you're discussing with the architect, there may be a decision there that decides that that welded connection is better used for this situation. You do need to be about careful about exposure and durability if you decide to go down that welded path. I'll drop down in the below description some of the math calculations that you saw above about bolted connections and welded connections. So I hope you try it out. If you did enjoy this video, you'll love this video here about the golden rules of steel design. They'll give you the fundamentals of steel design to bring your designs up to the next level. If you are interested in supporting the channel further, there is two ways that you can do this. You can either become a YouTube or Patreon members. Without the support of my YouTube or Patreon members, this type of content would not be possible. As always, keep learning and I'll see you in two weeks. Bye.